today, six minute plus seconds video today that is on the YouTube. It's also on our personal Facebook page um, and uh, should be on the Precise X Institute of Holistic Knowledge uh, YouTube page as well. And what we were doing, we were basically just reminding the public of the lecture tomorrow evening. And if you if you saw that video, you would have noticed that we showed a few slides. You're going to see those same slides tomorrow, plus many more. But we showed a few slides that even without explanation, the person that would be observing the slide would be seeing different renditions of what appears to be the Ark of the Covenant. Now, so for example, you saw the Ark of Tut Ankh Amman. I'm sure you would have seen it if you saw the video. It looks like a chest, very similar to the Ark of the Covenant with the staves and everything. All right, very good. And then you also saw the Ark of, what else did we show? Anpu. There's the Ark of Anpu. Again, very similar in its formation and Anpu, or that's Anubis on top. Then you have the chests of which the ark is a chest that you see carried on the boats. Interestingly, because in the Bible, there's another ark, not necessarily of the covenant, but it is an ark of the covenant, but it's the ark of Noah. And the ark of Noah is a boat. And if you notice, the ark of Noah is like a big ship, a boat with a little house on top of it. At least that's the way it's portrayed. Interestingly, now, in ancient tradition, God always comes in a boat. God always comes in an ark. You know, God himself is the symbol of the mercy seat and that which is upon the mercy seat, I should say, which is the commandments. Follow me, good. So the commandments of God represents God, really, Christ. You know, that's why the commandments are placed inside of the ark. It's a deep vibe. We're in, again, the mercy seat and the Shekinah, which is the presence of God, the Shekinah light and the voice of the Most High will come and sit on the mercy seat and express himself to the, the population. Mm -hmm. So the, the act of the covenant represents somewhat of the, the body of God, in a sense, the, 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 the structure that the God, the Lord of hosts, use to communicate with man. So that's, you see the ark, even if it's not termed an ark, anytime in ancient comedic theology you hear them speak about the bark, the bark is a boat. And of course, bark is not spelled with a K, it's spelled with a Q. But at the same time, the, the bark without a B is like, you know, a dog will bark, that kind of bark without the B is an ark. Again, it's spelled different, I know, but you, you must understand etymology and the point that is being made. Because in the bark of Ra, there's not necessarily a chest. In many cases, you see Ra sitting down and the, the person going through giving homage to Ra. So the ark is on the bark. Because the ark represents the living being. Eh? The ark is a living human being. And that is why there's an ark. The ark is in Ethiopia. The ark, what we call the ark of the covenant, according to the legend, that is in Ethiopia. But that's just one ark. But interestingly now, in all the churches in Ethiopia, I mean those of the Orthodox faith from ancient times. I know nothing's in Ethiopia now, you know protestants and all kind of thing but but the ancient understanding of the science of the ethiopian church is that there is the main ark the ark of the covenant the ark that according to our legend according to the kebranegas the ark that came from the hands of solomon you know and was taken from the temple of solomon by his son menelik menelik the first the son of Makeda, the queen of Sheba as well. And he brought the ark to Ethiopia where it is up to this day. And at this moment, it is in the, the chapel of St. Mary guarded by 
a monk who should guard it until he pass on and then someone else comes and continues the duty according to the legend. So the ark now, that is one ark, but that one ark represents God. Interestingly, in all the churches, how many other churches they may have, there's a replica of the ark. Or, or, well, that's what it's called. But most of them is basically a slab known as the tabat. And you would see them carrying the tabat on certain specific um, occasions, like the baptism of Christ or timkat. Tim Cat, also known as uh, Epiphany, they call it, yeah. And of course, the 7th of January, the Earth Day of Lalibela. But I think, and the Christ, Christ Earth Day, said, wait, I think that Tim Cat, I think they, they more concentrate on bringing them out, even on Tim Cat, more than the 7th of January, to be honest. And maybe other days, the New Year's Day, I'm not too sure, Mascal for sure you know, the, the tabots would be paraded out. They don't necessarily bring out the ark. In fact, the ark is said to have never been seen. Some say it, it, from the time it went into the chapel, it never came out. But again, as you would have seen if you saw the video we did, it is said that there was a specific time that the ark came out for a specific ceremony. As you could see when, when those of you, well, when you're with us tomorrow, you'll see it didn't see it on the YouTube or the Facebook or wherever you scope us from. But but the emperor sitting before the well wrapped ark. I believe that. I know there are those that say, oh well, they don't believe that's the real ark because they don't believe that there is a real ark. Hey, we're gonna go deep into this, you know, not just tomorrow, even now. <laughs> this is the shock of the hour. Eh? This is the shock of the hour. Even the way that the ark left from Solomon to Ethiopia is under some real supernatural sort of meditation, you know, and the ark flew through the air and even the Kebernadah speaks of the ark and, and Solomon's son Menelik I coming through Egypt with the entourage and the Egyptians thought that it was Solomon himself, how his son resembled him. And, and interestingly, you know, they left a false ark in Solomon's temple. In fact, it took them a moment to figure out that what was in there wasn't the real ark, which really brings me now to the meditation, which is a key point. Not that the ark being a false ark, because what we'll be speaking of in more in depth tomorrow, we will be also highlighting the fact that the ark, in its description, number one, there are other arcs that have the similar uh, or similar description as far as size, height, and width and length. Now, again, so many things because the ark itself, the biblical ark of the covenant, if you was if you were to put your neck on the block for its dimension, I would not encourage you to do that. Because the Ark of the Covenant in the Bible, like many other things in the Bible, have been described more than once. And interestingly, the descriptions tend to vary. I don't know how anyone can say that the Bible does not contradict itself. I mean, when you're religious, you're religious. When you're dogmatic, you're dogmatic. And I understand how a person feels, you know, when they strongly believe that they have the truth fully here, not on no esoteric level, no, on a literal level, because the truth is fully there esoterically, but on the literal level, yeah, and they, that's what they believe. And they clearly will tell you the Bible does not contradict itself when books like Genesis and even this we'll touch upon tomorrow shows you that the height of the flood, the height of the flood was less than the height of the ark. Oh my, we've done programs on this already. <laughs> you, you could check out our YouTube channel and check Noah, Noah's ark, the program we did on Noah's ark, not the one when we were by the penguin's pool. 
that was about 12 minutes long the Noah's Ark or something about Noah's Ark but it was short the picture is like a big ship yeah and we, we clarify that the, the, the flood the height of the flood was lower than the, sh the height of the ship <laughs> I'm telling you and listen I'm not the writer of the book and the, the, the amount of animals that enters in, in one chapter, one story, one time it telling you seven clean, then it comes back and say two clean, then it come back and say seven clean, and still come back and say two clean. And, and you know, you see these things all over, all over, all over. Samuel said, God is not a God to repent. That's in the beginning of the chapter. And at the end of the chapter now, God said he repent, he made Saul king. At the end of the book, you know, the same chapter, the exact same chapter, not the next chapter, or some other from the Old Testament to the New Testament, in the very same chapter, Samuel said that God is not a man that he repent. And then God say, down in the chapter, he repent <laughs> that he made Saul king. You know, and and you know, sometimes I look at these things as maybe these are some hidden messages to show you God is a man. Because someone say he ain't a man, he ain't gonna repent. And then he come back and repent, you know. And 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 like for example, they, they refer to Christ as the son of man. Now he's the son of God, and he's the son of man. Now remember the whole theology behind Christ. I wouldn't call it the theology the um the symbolism behind christ is that or, or, or most of the philosophy is that he doesn't have a father and god is his father you know he doesn't have an earthly father and all of that you know the story virgin mary xyz but yet still he's called the son of man so if he ain't got no earthly father and god is his father and he's a son of man. So which man is he the son of? That's the, I mean, he's the son of man. Who's the man? Who, King David? But he didn't relate to David. Well, they say he is, but if, his, if Joseph ain't his father, he, they ain't no David lineage to go to. But we know that. I mean, we understand that by now. We know, again, the levels. Number one, that's not even something that we see realistic, you know. His father and mother make a child. But the point I'm making is that it is showing you that he's a son of man. So it's as if it's telling you on a, on a, on a mystic level that God is a man. Because Moses says God is a man of war. And then the next man say, well, God is not a man. Why? Because he don't repent. Yeah. But God, what do you think about Saul? Boy, repent me and made Saul king, eh? Yeah, he, for example, the man say repent. You know what I mean? Sound like a man to me. You just say. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't look at it from that angle, you may have to say, well, the Bible contradicting itself. And I'm saying all that really, not not really, you know. I mean, you know me by now. It's not beat, we're beating it up, you know, like we're beating the Bible up. We're just showing you that there are other levels to get into this book that most people just, you know, totally overlook or underlook. You know, and, and on different levels, those that are Bible bunnies, because they don't understand it, they just put it aside and, oh, we don't care, we don't care, it's the truth. Foolishness. And then there's a the next set that said, what? Look, he say he repent, and he don't repent. Boy, let's throw that in the fire. They, they, they're not ready to sit and have no conversation with the, the, the part, you know, the executives there, so they could understand why it says so. So I'm bringing all of that back to the ark of the covenant and its dimensions you have two different sets of dimensions in the ark in fact should i pull that up now or we're going to wait tomorrow for that but not that i'm holding back anything from you in the family you know the shop of the hour is just about an hour and i want to cover a few different things if i go deep into that i may stay on that one point for the program i don't want to do that because we will be getting to that tomorrow in fact let me just see if i just run through it quick i know i already perked your interest there but um you know 
the different dimensions that you see offered here. As I said, maybe tomorrow we're going to do some different there. But 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 within the book of Exodus, you have specific dimensions, dimensions of of, of another account also. Um, um, it's deep, you know, family is very deep. But anyway, one of these dimensions of the length of the ark being five feet two inches is one of the 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 early facts we heard as it relates to Haile Selassie the first that being his height be his height Haile Selassie is the the length of the ark so you could imagine where that will carry the whole conversation you know but then um dimensions of the ark in another account shows it to be three three feet eight inches you understand but again this is just how esoteric writings are brought forward and if you are students of the class you would understand again that esoteric and symbolism doesn't mean that they, they, they do not crystallize and materialize historically at some time or the other it's a very deep science and i really hope you understand these things because all we speak of and teach is not just really to show that we know something eh? it's actually a lesson it's a it's a proper um it's a within conversation it's it's to assist others to go to a higher level you know sometimes i hear people say oh you know we talk a lot and we, this is this is not a time for talking for years we're talking time to, for doing and all of that and i totally agree with them Sometimes it's me they're trying to talk to you, but you see, <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to say. People misunderstand this. This is not talking. This is teaching. They must always be teachers. Even when they stop talking and start to do, somebody must be there to teach. And this teacher is a doer. That's another thing altogether. But you see, the teaching is so loud and heavy. And ones are threatened by what's coming out. So they use some sort of excuse, some sort of scapegoat, which is a biblical term to, to bring to the conversation, to make it look like, okay, yeah, too much talking. Somebody, yeah, let's, let's start to do man. You're talking too much. No, we teach him a lot. That's the point, you understand. So we're going to go into that in its fullness. But the thing is now, you know, why are there different dimensions for, for the act? Uh, in, in in how it's described and again now interestingly Menelik the first when he took out the ark he put in another ark hmm all right now as I said Tutankhamun has an ark Anpu has an ark and before the covenant of the ark was made before the time of Moses we always saw us in ancient Africa carrying that chest with the staves and everything similar to the Ark. We even have the goddess, the goddesses with the angelic wings stretched, touching each other over the chest, just like the biblical Ark. This is very interesting. And as I said, the Ark now is also the bar. Because the bark represents the boat that carries the, 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 the ra, the sun, the risen sun throughout the heavens, throughout the different hours. All of this is seen in the book of Gates. You also see Kunu going through his bark in a chest-like form like the ark. And I'm trying to show you that the bark is directly linked to the ark. That is why Noah's bark is a bark he has is Noah's ark, his ship and his boat. Because we use these terms, ship and boat and these different things, it draws a certain picture, a specific figure comes to mind and then the nursery crimes added to that only assist us to misunderstand the story completely. And there was an old man that built a ship and got two of every animals on the planet and we know that ain't reality there at all, at all. That's not even, not even a miracle can bring that one to know reality. You understand? There's certain things that miracles cannot help you. Oh, yeah, man, I can pull them out for you. But this is one of them. Because 
it's it's not that it's not that it's not a literal story it's it is a literal story it's a very literal story it's a creation story as a matter of fact even even in its nursery rhyme kindergarten stage of there was a man that built a boat with two of every animals and the world was flooded out and everybody died and then the, the earth sprang back up that's a creation story there in a baby farm that's why you got two of every animals it's a creation story noah is god that is why the god knew on the comedic you know we have touched this of course that's why the god knew on the comedic walls carries what he's carrying there you now a bark <laughs> and inside of the bark you have four you have uh um, well technically it's seven people and and kept right in the full form of a beetle but then interestingly new makes eight people because noah was one of the eight people within the boat really because the Noah story is eight people was in the boat and in the new story it's eight people on the back that new was carrying through the flood because new represents god it's a creation story like noah represents god it's a creation story and remember new is noah's name huh? new is noah's name etymologically when we jump into it as i said arabic amharic and aramic i mean yeah similar that is why in arabic the character that we call noah his name is new 